The Oxy One is really getting me going. It feels like it's on par with my obsession with the Model 1.4. By the way, I'm still obsessed with this thing. Ever since I've owned it, it's just become such an integral part of my setup. I feel like the same thing is gonna be happening with the Oxy One. In terms of sequencers within my setup, I think this is it. I don't see myself going with any other sequencer anytime soon. I mean, I guess it depends on the setup, but I don't even really see myself utilizing a sequencer within a standalone unit just because I could just blow up everything and control it from the Oxy one. Of course, if I want to demonstrate something specific within a standalone unit to you guys, that's a different story, but within my own creative setup. And that's one really cool thing about the Oxy one. It eliminates the need to learn sequencers on other instruments. Also eliminates maybe the letdown or the reason to not buy a specific instrument because it has maybe not the best sequencer. This solves your problem. I do really like the idea of just focusing in on one specific sequencer, mastering that, and then just controlling all of your other instruments with that, as opposed to having to learn and relearn different sequencers, which all have their like little minute differences. Creatively speaking, it's one of those pieces of gear that's fresh and juicy right from the start. So far, I've been using it in such a simple way in combination with the Hydrosynth Explorer, as well as the DigiTact for drums. I'm by no means like a master of using the Oxy One. I'm still in first impression mode, but I just wanted to express the excitement that I'm experiencing using the Oxy One within a simple setup like this. The point of this video isn't to show every single aspect of the instrument. It's more about the results, the results that I'm getting uh, using the Oxy One. So if you are looking for like an A to Z, how this thing works type of video, I mean, just, just go with a loop hop video. Uh, we all know, <laughs> we all know how it is. A lot of the examples that you're going to hear in this video are available in sample like separate stem sample form through my patreon join up if you are interested i upload weekly exclusive content over on my patreon it'd be good to have you there and this video is sponsored by distrokid if you're an independent artist looking to release original music to all major streaming platforms like spotify apple music itunes amazon all of them distrokid is basically made for someone like you, for someone like me as well. I've been using them for years now. They're the best. And we'll be venturing into why I think they're the best later in this video. And also, if you're interested in any of the gear in this video, please do consider using the affiliate links in the description as well. It's all support and helps uh, keep this channel going. Enough of that, let's take a look at how I've been using the Oxy One. I will say that this unit has somehow bumped me into Technoland, so prepare yourself for some techno inspired examples. You can see that I'm at 135 BPM, prime techno tempo already. So we've got four sequencers here and you're actually able to choose the type for each of them. So mono, poly, chord, multi-track, stochastic, matricial or matricial, I'm not sure how to pronounce that last one. These first few are pretty self-explanatory. So mono is what I've been using predominantly for the examples in this video. Poly, so if you wanna play several notes at the same time, there's also a chord mode, which is really interesting. Uh, especially for if you're not a keyboard player, it'll give you like examples that you might not have thought of, different chords, different harmonies. And then there's stochastic and matricial, which is something that I'll definitely be focusing in on a different video. So many different combination possibilities. I've actually been using it in such a simple way. Like for example, even if you go with mono for each of these sequencers, you could get results like this. I'm currently set to one bar, so that's 16 steps. You can go as far as 128 steps. We're gonna keep it simple for this video. And you know what? There's actually one thing I want to add to the setup. Give me one second. Okay, so I've set up the key step 37, which just makes plugging notes into the Oxy one a lot more simple. I mean, there is like a preview function here where you're able to enter in notes as if it's a keyboard. And this might actually be like a, an interesting way to achieve results. But for this video, I just want to demonstrate that you're also able to use the key step 37 to control the Oxy one. One interesting thing to take note of here is that you're actually able to choose the quality of the scale that you're using. So chromatic, obviously my keyboard is just regular chromatic mode. If I choose a different quality though, let's say minor. These two notes are the same. 
right? So you can't play any wrong notes within the scale, no matter what notes on the keyboard that you play. So I have a kick going here on the dig attack. I'm just gonna audition some notes here. I already like that shift record, make sure that quantize is, uh, is on. So I have that selected to on, uh, cause I want everything to snap right to the grid. I'm gonna hit record, two, one, two, three, eh. Cool, so that's been quantized. Let's say after entering in this pattern, I just want to experiment with a different scale. I could do that on the fly afterwards, after recording it. So shift. Phrygian is a different thing. Interesting. Right, and so I could do this uh, for each of these sequencers. I could also change the starting note of the sequence. I'm gonna bring it down to G or F, let's say. You'll notice that some of these notes have extra steps afterwards. So if I hold this note, I want it to hold for, let's say, till right till the next note, I could do that. So now I've extended that note. Maybe do that to all of them for now. Right, so that note has now been extended. It's a very subtle difference because of the preset on the hydrosynth. So this is an interesting pattern. I'm going to mute the hi-hat again. So now we just have the kick and I'm just gonna scroll through some of the presets on the hydrosynth. Okay. Loving that. Right, so obviously there's a sequencing thing happening here. So the yeah, the arpeggiator is on in the hydrosynth, which is why, see if I take that off, you just get the notes. But if I combine the arpeggiator with the sequence going on in the, uh, the Oxy-1, So again, just demonstrating how the Oxy-1 just pulls out like the juiciness of uh, anything that it's controlling. And so the next thing we're gonna take a look at is this little button right here. Hopefully you could see that properly. It's like a little roll the dice button. So this is the, I think it's called the random generator button. This is a feature that more and more new sequencers have. So like the first thing that comes to mind is the poly -end play. It has a similar sort of randomize function. So for this demonstration, I think it'd be best if I went to like a one-shot synth sound. And I'm just gonna go ahead and play around with these uh, parameters and see what we get here. So this is just the regular pattern. Just turn up the randomize function uh, parameter. Still nothing happening. We're gonna go to that second page. I think it's 25%. Octave, there it is. So it's it's adding notes into this uh, sequence. Mind you, all of these notes are in the right key. Remember that? So there's no wrong notes. What if we played around with re-trigger? Yeah, it gets a little messy, but. Okay, so we'll turn that re-trigger to zero. And I'll turn the octave to 10%, because I want this bass pattern, like the foundation, and maybe some random notes here and there. And that's good for me. So the random generator affects the entire pattern altogether. If I want to zero in on a specific note, I have even more controls to work with. So let's say this specific note within the sequence, I want to trigger it only 25% of the time. So one out of every four times, let's see if that actually works. It works. Where is it? Come on, give us that note.
there it is. Okay, so it seems to be less than 25% of the time, but anyways, there's maybe a bit more tweaking to do there. I'll put this stuff back up to like 70%. Okay, now it's back. This isn't anything new with sequencers, like the electron sequencers have been able to do this for years now, zeroing in on specific notes to change parameters on that specific note. It's just good to know that you indeed have that sort of control with the Oxy one. And something that I actually missed here, shift, go to specific note, trigger zero to 100%. There's also, you know, like one of every two times, one of every three times, two out of every three times. There's like, you know, if you want that specifically, uh, there's also much like electron sequencers like the DigiTact. If I go further up, so many options here. Wow. There's first, first with a line. So I haven't even gone into all these. There's a fill mode as well, much like the uh, electron sequencers. I use those all the time. So yeah, some more uh, exploring for future videos. If you have any questions about that specifically, please let me know and I'll include it in a future video about the Oxy one. For the rest of the sequences, two and three are both in mono. I'm just gonna get rid of the key step 37 and just plug in some notes just to have a different method here going forward. Let's say on this second sequencer, I wanna add in some higher notes here into the sequencer. Just gonna go ahead and do that. And let's see what this sounds like. Well, that's too high. Maybe around there. Uh, and I'm just going to literally and in some random notes, see what happens here. Here we go. Whoops, wrong one. Just keep it simple, even if it's just one note. Bang, that one. I'm gonna extend that note. Over to the third sequencer set that starting note once again to F to make sure that everything's in the correct key. Also able to mute and unmute these so mute so now that's just pattern one if I'd like to sort of layer these layer them together And on and on and on. I could just do this all fucking day. We could have, of course, maybe changed one of these into poly mode, but I found that this was just a really simple and interesting way that just gives results with the Oxy One. So let's go with a different sound on the Hydra synth. I'm just gonna open up the keyboard here. Right, so now we have poly mode. And of course, if I had my keyboard uh, still set up, I'd be able to play it through that as well, which would be a little bit easier. If you wanted to play like specific chords, if you're a keyboard player, but maybe you're not a keyboard player or you have limited knowledge of playing the keyboard, that's where chord mode becomes really interesting. But before getting into it, let's talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. If you are an independent artist or producer, DistroKid is pretty much the number one choice. First off, there's a discount linked in the description of this video, which I encourage you to use. It's just over $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. And one of the things that makes it amazing for independent artists is just the sheer amount of free promotional tools that they offer. Personally, my favorite is Hyperfollow, which I like to use as a free link and bio link. It's the cleanest that I could find and you're able to claim as many pages as you'd like 
for free. So for example, if you have multiple artist names or possibly landing pages for singles or any other important landing pages, DistroKid's got you with Hyperfollow. They recently released an iOS app so you can access all of your DistroKid information, your statistics, all through your smartphone which just makes everything that much easier and like on the go. So join the team. There's over 1 million DistroKid users and they distribute one third of the world's music. It just gives you so many different chord options and inversions, obviously depending on the scale that you're using. So I'm gonna actually head over back to here again and change the scale quality. I'm gonna change it to Dorian. Let's see what that gives us. Right, so you could go all the way down to like the lowest of low notes, into the high notes, inversion. You can bend the notes, change the velocity. So again, another example of where you just can't play wrong notes as long as you're set in the right scale, the same scale as all of your other parts. There's no going wrong. I mean, this is like ultimate cheese, but you get the point. Scrolling through any modern synth, you're gonna stumble upon some you know, percussive rhythms. There's more melodic stuff, harmonic stuff. So just scrolling through that while your sequencer is playing, you're gonna stumble upon some really interesting and tasty ideas. And in my opinion, that's where the Oxy One is just like bursting with creativity. It's, I think my new favorite idea generator. So a few other reasons why I'm really liking the Oxy One. The Oxy One has encouraged me to take out synths that I haven't used in a while. And the reason for that, honestly, for someone in my position, I'm constantly learning new synths, so it takes up a lot of brain power. So not having to worry about the sequencer or learning the sequencer on a specific synth and just relying on the Oxy One is pretty tempting and it works really well for me. Like if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you have like a basic understanding of what a sequencer does, but they all have their little minute differences that are a bit tedious to, to use to your creative advantage. To me, the idea of mastering a specific sequencer and then just using it to control all of your other synths is pretty tempting like in a, from a creative standpoint. As I mentioned, I haven't had this excited feeling since I picked up the Model 1.4, so I will definitely be exploring the Oxy One a lot more for you guys. This is by no means a deep dive, but this is my first impression of the Oxy One how I've been using it, the results that I've been getting, and hopefully it demonstrates from day one how the Oxy One can become an integral part of anybody's setup, any synth user's setup. If there's anything else that you would like for me to include in future videos about the Oxy One, please let me know. A lot of the playing examples that you heard today are in sample pack form uh, available to Patreon members, so go check out that if you're interested in the description. And support this channel by using affiliate links for any or all of the gear in this video. Thank you guys so much for being here and hope to see you soon.